Hello everyone and welcome back to my complete career run through in Kerbal Space Program 0.23 and it is time to rescue Jeb at long last. And I don't think any of the missions I've done in this series have made me more nervous. But uh, here we are with the vehicle that's going to do the primary work of it. And it's on the Lambda Launcher. But uh, it's a bit unsightly, I really don't like this, but we are in an emergency situation, we, it is a rescue mission, so I'm going to accept the fact that I'm not making my normal sleek rocket here, uh, especially since we don't have fairings or anything like that to use. Um, I considered putting this, this is uh, the transit tank, this is the tank that's going to let us get to Duna, and, and, and also probably break around Duna. Uh, and uh, help this to descend. Um, it's got uh, fuel feed up to this tank and this tank feeds these tanks which feed the nuclear rockets. Alright so yeah I considered putting this at the top but I really couldn't figure out how to do that and still have a docking port in a good situation. Uh, because we have to get this to dock with Bill who's in orbit. So and Bill has the return craft which uh, of course has the all-important parachutes um, so this can't return on its own. Lots of considerations here. I better uh, act, make sure I've action group the solar panels. Let's have it on action group 2 actually because the the return craft has it on 1 and hopefully that'll mean I'll get to keep my action groups. So the legs extend as such and I hope that's enough. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna lock suspension on them. I don't really need them bouncing. Yeah. Let's do that now. Uh, if I don't lock suspension, I'm worried that the nuclear rockets might be in jeopardy. Uh, as these compress, the nuclear rockets might fall off. So I'm gonna lock suspension on those. And bring them back up. Alright, so we have a little rover here, and that's just in case we land more than a kilometer away from Jeb. And uh, I use these wheels because if we're, gonna be, uh, if we're accidentally landing that far away from Jeb, it's going to be a long distance. And so normally you would put uh, these rover wheels on, but notice their crash tolerance is 20 meters per second, which means they don't go very fast. So I prefer these which have 50 meters per second. That doesn't mean they'll actually go 50 meters per second. That just means they'll hold out until that point. And so that'll allow me to cover a little bit more ground if uh, we need to. However, I'm not too sure it'll decouple safely. It doesn't have a pro par, of course. We're still doing uh, completely manned stuff. But I don't know if it can get through very well. We'll have to see. Um... I'm also worried that if I try and drop it off, like let's say I hover above the ground like a few feet and then drop it off and then try and land the rest of it, that right when I do that, it's going to make me switch to this rover and then I'll lose control over this and it'll crash. So I'm, let's hope we don't need to use the rover. <laughs> let, me just, let me just put it that way. I, 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 I'm, I'm packing it, but I'm not too sure I want to use it. I don't. Um... Uh, actually, oh, I think these seats are backwards, aren't they? Uh, yeah, wasn't looking carefully enough. The rover was more of an afterthought. Though it's sort of neat to be able to pack a rover underneath there. I don't know if it'll work, like I said, so let's. Uh, I guess we'll get a chance to test it out even if we don't need it. Um, yeah, I think the best is spoken for here. We've got struts, obviously, to keep this all steady. Hopefully, that will be enough. Uh, if it isn't, I'll have to throttle down and. Uh, We'll have to see that. Uh, I, 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 I think it'll be enough. I, I don't want to see any issues with that. All right, so it'll just be Bob because we need the space free for Jeb. And yeah, let's take it out to launch pad. 
Alright, so we're going to rendezvous with Lambda 6 here. Mm, not a bad time to go up, I think. I think it should be fine. Yeah, I think it should be fine. Alright. Uh, looks like uh, it didn't get rid of our uh, other craft, Lambda 4. Even though I brought it uh, to 30 kilometers, it uh, didn't burn up. Oh well. Alright. SAS on. Throttle all the way up. Bob is ready to go. Very excited. And uh, yeah, without further ado, let's launch. Okay, looks like we'll be ahead of it, so, hmm, I guess we should keep burning actually. Sounds like we just hit the edge of space. So let's say we add a maneuver here, come on you, and then burn for the rest of it, yeah. Suggest it a little bit. Continue up. Just a little bit more. Aha! Uh -huh. Okay, that's a breaking point there. Well, this looks pretty good. Just have to fix inclination, it looks like. Yep, alright, we'll take those two maneuvers. Oh, I did forget one thing. I didn't put lights on this one. So the the return capsule, the command pod, does have lights, but this does not. So so yeah, obviously still want to do the landing in the daytime anyway, but just for you to know. And we continue. Hopefully this doesn't cut into our our budgets too much. Uh oh, it's being indecisive again. <laughs> How it could uh, mistake 2.4 for 240 at uh, 210? I have no idea. Oh, it looks like every time I try and adjust this one, the separation increases. So let me not do that anymore. Now let's say I do one... Uh-oh. Very strange. So if I just create a maneuver here... It suddenly decides that I've lost that other maneuver. This is very, very worrisome. But it should be that I'm going slower than this one and that we do intercept. But it seems like any attempt on my part to bring the separation closer, the computer does not like. So I'll just have to do it here.
Let's get the hatch open. Okay, so sorry for not chatting too much. Obviously, I'm just trying to figure out the stocking without uh, wasting too much of the fuel that I have. I do have a surplus of fuel. I, Because I was nervous about this mission, I did create with large margins. But there's a limit to that. Okay, switching to the other one. Let's get all this pointed upright. Take our CS off of this. Oop, a bounce. Another bounce. Okay, stop bouncing. How far off we are we? Doesn't look like we should be far off at all. Uh, maybe some sort of angle between them. Uh, let's get some... Coercive RCS. I'm not really seeing where there's a difference between them. Uh, let me switch to the other one. Okay, set as target. Wow, sure looks like it's all lined up nice. But uh, let's back away. Well, the magnetism is bringing us together. We're just not docking. How strange. I don't remember this. Ah, there we go. Finally. Wow. Shush. That sure took a while. Now, this one has to be shut off. So, okay, it is. Uh, so, we're all set, looks like. Bill and Bob back together again. And uh, it's a nifty looking craft. Let's see if we can get it in sun, sun, sunshine. I mean, as uh, far as uh, interplanetary craft go, I think it's nifty. It's got a little rover there just in case that actually works. Um, RCS can be off. And now they're going to have to wait in orbit a while because we don't have Duna in the right position yet. We have to catch up to Duna. So I'm going to zoom to the flag on the moon. A any flag on the moon. And time warp from there. Alright, so as usual, I'm looking for 45 degrees, and it's as simple as that. So, 45 degrees between Duna and Kerbin. Okay, that looks like 45 degrees to me, I think. Yeah, yep, yep. Alright, so let's go back. Okay, so they're all right. They're waiting patiently, so let's get them to Duna. I don't think we'll be lucky enough to burn out of periapsis for Duna. How horrible is it though? Ah, uh, it looks like it's as bad as it can get. I think we're gonna have to burn out of our apoapsis, which is the worst. That means all the e extra energy that is represented by, you know, the fact that the apoapsis is so high, all of that basically gets lost, I think. Oh, well that was easy. Okay, how much is it? Uh, 1,100. See, I've, I've plotted for Duna with like uh, 1,000 or less. So I think we're paying an extra 100 for this one. Okay, well there was the... Just saw it. Alright. So we have an encounter. And we... I, I'm not gonna play around with it like this. Uh, once we burn, I'll try and get it as close as possible. Alright, so in 26 minutes. On the bright side, because we're burning out of our apoapsis, it means that we actually have longer to burn. Um, because 
the that portion of our orbit is relatively straight instead of curved towards Kerbin. And as long as that part of our orbit is straight, uh, we are our burn will not uh, deviate too much from the intended direction. Oh, I suppose we can get lights on now, so we don't have to be in the dark. Okay, well, probably, so oh wait, <sighs> controlling from the wrong end. So we're starting a bit late, that's a little bit of a problem. Okay, the other way around, please. Try not to wiggle. See, now this, this craft seems very stable, I don't know why the other one is wiggling so much, possibly, be, I don't know. Maybe there's a better balance between the two sides of the docking port on this one. Okay, so we're getting to the critical final phases of the burn here. As usual, the last few delta V make all the difference. So let's uh, slow it down and see how close we can get to Duna on this portion. Then there'll be the mid-course burn, and then uh, and then we'll arrow break around Duna. So we need to get into the atmosphere, and so I'm aiming for as close to Duna as possible. Oh, let's get rid of the maneuver node so it doesn't confuse anything. Uh oh, uh oh. Um, yeah, I think I've already passed where it uh, encounters. If it's going up like that. Or maybe there's a second encounter somewhere? I don't know. Let's see. Let me just see if there's an encounter. Okay, now it's going up. Alright, uh, that's close enough for me. And uh, we'll wait until we get out to the ascending node before getting any closer. Everything looks good. Uh, electric charge is down, but that's probably because th we are on the dark side right now. And the sun will be coming out soon. So Bob and Bill on their way to Duna. And uh, yep, let's time warp and get to the mid-course plane change. I'll see you there. Okay, so I've got a maneuver node for a periapsis of 1,000 kilometers, so that should be good enough. From out here, that's pretty good. Let's uh, point towards it, and then wait two days, and then take care of the meager 8.1 meters per second that it requires of us. Okay, well, I don't know exactly how close we're getting, but we have an ink encounter, so that's always a good sign, I guess. Um, yeah. Uh, I think I'll just keep it to this, and we'll do any final adjustments as we approach Duna. Alright, so, uh, yep, uh, see you in Duna Sphere of Influence. Alright, so here we are, and let's see what the situation is. Uh, well, looks like Ike before hitting Duna. I always hate that. It's alright to have Ike after we hit Duna, but uh, not before. And it's not letting me create a maneuver node. Great. Well, I guess I can create one all the way out here. We have to get into an equatorial orbit, or at least close to it, because that's where Jeb is. Jeb is close to the equator. Part of the problem is that uh, Ike is skewing us a bit. Alright, uh, let's get past Ike first. I don't know what our Ike encounter looks like right now. What is our Ike periapsis? I don't want to smash into it. Uh, we've got two of them. How do we have two of them? Oh, because of the after the burn. Uh, uh, before or after the burn, it looks like it's safe still. All right. 
Oh, it shows us crashing into Duna right now. Uh, tell you what, let's get in past Ike before I do anything more. The inclination change should have been the bigger part of it, anyway. Ah, it's no good. I mean, I, uh, because of the I perturbations of Ike, I can't tell what I'm doing, basically. <laughs> The that result of what I'm doing doesn't make any sense. All right, I'm gonna see you past Ike, I think, or at least maybe within Ike's your influence. But uh, as usual, I don't want to record across the gap because that produces errors. Okay, so here we are, and uh, I'm going to try and create a new maneuver based on what I see here now. Okay, well, this is the generally right direction, so let me take it in like this. And I want a periapsis of 12.5 kilometers or thereabouts. Nope. A little bit too far. Just gonna burn retrograde, that usually pulls the periapsis down. No, it's retrograde with respect to, yeah, it's with, with respect to Ike. That's not right. Oh, okay, I'll do it in Duna Sphere of Influence. That uh, that would make more sense. All right, so see you outside of the Ike situation. All right, so now we have 13.7 kilometers. Sorry for sticking in this view, but uh, of course we don't have the periapsis written out in the main view. And that's what's important here right now. Okay, that's good enough. Alright, so we are pointed retrograde. Let's orient a little bit more. And that looks like about the planet side. I think we can retract the solar panels without any issues. All right, looks like we're configured to uh, have our air break at Duna. Let's make a final check to make sure the periapsis hasn't deviated. All right. I did put some science instruments on the top, a, a token gravioli seismometer and thermometer. So once we land, uh, I mean, I put them on the lander. So once we land, we will be able to get some science as well as whatever Jeb does. Okay. Here we go. The 12.5 number comes out of experience rather than any particular calculation, so I'm not 100% sure it's right for the speed I'm currently going at. Okay, looks like we're gonna get in orbit soon. Sudden cut in of music for some reason. Okay. Doesn't look like a bad orbit to get to Jeb there. Okay, so we're headed back up. Doesn't look too bad. Could potentially burn some to slow us down and get into a proper orbit here. 
Let's wait until we're a little bit more out of the atmosphere. Okay, well, this should be good enough. I don't think it's got to produce any more drag. So, let me... Actually, that... Well, the way I was pointing was fine. Let's go for it. Uh, hmm. I don't really want to drop the periapsis. I actually want to raise it, so... Try and find an angle that will suit that. Yeah, it looks like we're uh, pretty much perfect for uh, for an intercept for pickup. So we've got plenty of fuel in this part, uh, this tank left, so we'll be able to use that to bring the lander down. Okay, well, we don't need to be particularly low as such. What we do need is a stable orbit, so let's make sure that we burn up from there. And perhaps an orbit that will let us to do some time warping would be ideal. So, above 100 kilometers? Yeah. So then we'll leave the return vehicle in orbit and the rest of it will be going down. Now I know, I mean, it's interesting that I have a return vehicle that doesn't have the nukes. But uh, that's the way it is. We still have a full tank there. Should be more than enough. Okay, that's good enough. Uh, more than a uh, hundred kilometers on either side. Now we need to time warp so that uh, Jeb in the Theta lander happens to be on the daylight side, because otherwise everything's much more difficult. Okay, I think we've got him firmly in the daylight side. You know what I'd like? We've got the coordinates here, but what I'd really like is if they added the altitude. Because the coordinates are hardly useful, but the altitude would be a would, would be a big deal. Um, I think we'll add a maneuver on this. Uh, oh, I need to separate first. All right, let's not do that yet. All right, so uh, we should be all situated. In other words, I don't have to transfer anybody to anything. Bill will be remaining in orbit and Bob will be in the lander. So, um, yep, yeah, all the fuel there we need there. Let's undock. Okay, we're on the right side. Let's back away. Close the docking port. And now we can uh, plot. Hmm, maybe we shouldn't do it there. Doesn't look, well, yeah, it doesn't look like the right place to change the inclination that, because uh, we need to do that. Let's say around here, can we change the inclination? Yeah, there's a little bit better. So let's say we bring it in as well. Get the inclination down. Hopefully the planet won't have rotated too much, but uh, once we get there, we'll see. All right, so let's get over there. And we don't need RCS, we do need SAS. And it doesn't look like we have an electric charge situation, so. Oh, it's the rovers. The rover is sort of covered in solar panels the flat ones so I think it's the rover that uh, is recharging us right now
Okay, I think I'll go with a little bit more lead time. Don't dip too quickly. Alright. So we'll go with the, this uh, deorbit burn. Uh, we're in night and we don't have lights on this one. Well. Okay, looking good. Let's set that as a target. I think we'll uh, get in a bit before we start slowing down any further. These attempting a precision landing on Duna is not my idea of fun per se. <laughs> Uh, not as bad as like Lathe or Kerbin or anything like that, but, and let's forget Eve, but any atmosphere makes it a little bit trickier. And here's that atmosphere. Now I am going to have to look at map view a lot in order to try and get down where Jeb is. So sorry for that, even this isn't the most cinematic view of things. The thing is, I just need a lot of time to do this burn. It'd be nicer not to have to do it at this angle, but... Uh, my my two nukes need the time. Now I have to dump this can at the appropriate time as well. So it's good that at least we have that fuel, of course. One thing I don't want to have happen is for my apoapsis to cross me, which means that I would be going up. And let's stop that there. All right, and it looks like I need to shade a little bit north. So I'm gonna point a little bit north. Right around here should be a good time to continue. There he is. Let's get our gear down. Oh, going too far north. Sure looks like we're coming close. I'm actually gonna go towards it a bit now. All I see is really, really red. Um, okay, well, I'm gonna have to drop my. Holy crap. I can't see anything. Yeah, I'm gonna drop that tank. Alright, oh. 
great, the smoke. That's that's really great. That was just a tank. All right, all right, all right. Looks like we're coming close. <sighs> Taking it easy. Don't want to make a mistake at this point. Of course, there are many kinds of mistakes. One mistake would be burning too much fuel by taking the descent too slowly and cautiously. It's a delicate balance between caution and uh, and the re kind of reckless behavior that will save you a lot of fuel, uh, assuming you survive it. I once again do not know the altitude. Oops, tilting a bit down. I can't see anything because of the smoke. Well, at least I can see the texture of the land. For a bit, bit there, I couldn't see any texture on the land, so it's really hard to figure out how high I was. That was not a pleasant time. Looks like we're very close to our target. Okay, well, I'm not seeing any shadow yet. All right, we are on the ground safely with Bob Kerman, and I don't think we really need the rover. But uh, let's decouple it and see whether it would have been able to go, I guess. Um, well, I mean, we don't have a remote controller. Hmm. I think maybe it'd be Jeb who uh, tries to take it out for a drive. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's hop over to Jeb and uh, have him collect all his signs up, plant a flag, and get over here. Okay, so here's Jeb. I had a little bit of a weird experience. Uh, I zoomed to one of the parts he sort of left behind and it was <laughs> it was in an indeterminate situation. Let's put it that way. Okay, so materials bay. I don't know if we had already done this, but anyway. Uh, opening a sample container, you find that everything has turned red. Initial tests show that it'll never wash out of white spacesuits. You consider sending missions in pink EVA suits to reduce cleaning costs. Keep data. I don't remember if we did the crew report. Okay, gotta save that. Did we... That's uh, not what I wanted. Log temperature. Okay. Uh, barometer. Pretty thin at the surface. Parachutes not work here. Yeah, I think we found that out, and that's why I didn't pack any with uh, the current mission. Okay. Um, so I don't know how he gets to bring stuff. I guess I'll observe Mystery Goo as well. Okay, keep that data. I guess I might as well extend ladder, even though this doesn't really get him. Well, maybe it will get him to the ground. Let's see. All right, Jeb, let's rescue you. Now, can Jeb, uh, yeah, he can, well, he only takes the crew report from there. Can you take data from these? Uh, collect data. Remove data. Collect data. Remove data. Collect data. Remove data. Okay, and oh, uh, hmm. Can't get that one. I, I wonder if uh, I need to actually switch back to this. 
to get the seismic reading. Oh, I guess... I guess he has to be in it to get the seismic reading. Uh, alright. Uh, Jeb, can you... Well, I don't want him to... Yeah, let's just move on. I think I've got a seismometer on the other pod anyway. Oh, he's sort of buried in there. Ooh, that's not good. Alright, uh, can you go around the thing? Jeb. This is very weird. Um, I don't think he can reach up there. Alright, well, how about a uh, bit of... Uh, the EVA doesn't seem to be working right because of the weird situation. Honestly, I think I've got uh, the thermometer on the other one anyway. So, yeah, this is a little bit too much trouble. Alright, like I said, uh, let's do the necessaries. Take surface sample. Grainy, very fine sand like dust appears to be getting everywhere. To keep that data. EVA report. You determine that red sand castles are plausible. Excellent. Plant a flag. Okay. So, Jeb on Duna. The date. Finally got to get out of the capsule. Yes, it's been a very long time. Alright, now where is our fellow Kerbopod? Or whatever you want to call it. Mm, there it is. Alright. So let's get that jetpack going. Come on, up, 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 and forward. Ooh, nice. Nice landing. So this is... Yeah, this is the side that we would want to get on. Too far. Board. Okay. Right. Uh, ah, this is what I was afraid of. Now, it's got clearance, technically. Even his head's got clearance. But I'm, I'm moving forward. Let's try the docking ones. No. Go back. Go forward. Nope. It hits a hitbox somehow. And uh, even though it looks like there might be clearance, it doesn't really have it. All right, um, jab, leave seat. Whoa, that's a weird way to leave seat. I uh, knew you'd have to take a fall at some point. All right, and let's get him to the ladder and get him back into his rescue pod. So we've got plenty of fuel left. It should be a breeze to get back home, but I've already done quite a lot in this episode, and I certainly don't want to make any mistakes with that portion of the show. So, after I've gotten him back in here, I'm going to call it an episode. We have, we have got Jeb, we've got a lot of, oh well, let's get a seismic reading. 
uh, gives insight, okay. And uh, we didn't get the thermometer. Where did I? Did I only have a seismometer? Could have sworn I'd put more than that. Not seeing it though. Oh, it, it, <laughs> I put uh, I put solar panels on top of the instruments. That's not nice. But we can log gravity data. All right. Got the gravity data. I think I've got a thermometer tucked in behind here. Yeah. Okay. Bit sloppy there, having the instruments behind the solar panels. But anyway, we're all kitted out. Jeb and Bob are ready to go back home. And we will take care of such things in the next episode. So, uh, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.